2021 looks so, so good, especially if you're a fan of Japanese cars. And today we're gonna dive into each brand, each model that's coming new for 2021 for all the Japanese automakers. <laughs> Welcome back, Luxurious Fleet. If you're excited for 2021 and all the goodies it has for us, make sure to smash the like button. Let's start things off with Honda. They just unveiled the new Civic, or I should say the 11th generation Civic. We don't know a whole lot about it. A lot of people are saying it looks very European. I think I like the looks quite a bit. There's also likely a hatch coming later in the year of 2021. So look for the Civic to be on sale in the first half. I'm expecting four cylinder powertrains. I mean, it's a Civic. A and one and a half liter turbo. Who knows if we'll get the Civic Si before the end of 2021, but that'd be excellent if we did. We all want to have a manual transmission in the Civic, and we know those options aren't really around anymore since the cancellation of several manual transmission models in the Honda lineup. And also from Honda, we're supposed to be getting a new redesigned HRV. Um, expect the same powertrains as we get in the Civic, but this model sells really well for them and I expect it to continue to do well, especially with the redesign, offering all-wheel drive and a very compact SUV crossover package. But other than the Civic and the HRV, I don't think we have a whole lot coming from Honda this year, but what about Honda's luxury division, Acura? Well, things are really heating up for them. We know the MDX is coming out. I should say the redesigned MDX is coming out February 2nd. And guys, make sure to subscribe because I'm actually gonna be reviewing the MDX. If everything goes as planned, I will be reviewing it um, before embargo. So when the embargo ends, you'll get a review and my impressions of an MDX probably the advanced package with all the goodies on it. And the Type S will be coming later in 2021 with a 355 horsepower, my gosh, turbo V6, we can't wait for that. Standard MDX is gonna have the new 10-speed auto, uh, same old trusty, dusty, naturally aspirated V6 with about 290 horsepower. Yeah, expect to see these things on the road for a long time with the tried and true V6. And let's not forget the TLX Type S, guys. We know we're super excited for it. 3 liter turbo V6, 355 horsepower, just like the MDX Type S will have, 354 pound feet of torque. Cannot wait. It looks absolutely stunning from the images we have of it. And yeah, definitely stay tuned. Switching gears to Subaru, which you'll be able to switch your own gears in the BRZ. Redesign for 2021 as a 2022 model. We get a larger four cylinder boxer engine, 228 horsepower, and 184 pound feet of torque. That torque dip is going to be gone, guys. I can't wait to drive this and review it for you. Save the manuals. The BRZ looks great. And of course, we'll, we'll get onto Toyota later on with the 8.6 counterpart. But expect the BRZ to go on sale in the second half of 2021. I know I, I would like to see it sooner, but the way things are looking, it's probably second half with all the delays because of how awesome 2020 was. <laughs> Refreshed Forester. It's not exactly the most exciting thing, but we should be getting lights, new bumpers, maybe new wheel options. And and shifting gears on over to Nissan. Nissan needs a lot of help right now. They've had a rough 2020, more so than everyone else in this list today, but they're getting a new Pathfinder. Hopefully it ditches the CVT and puts in the nine speed automatic. I'm expecting them to just keep the old tried and true V6 in there. There's nothing wrong with that. And that V6 is also seen in the upcoming redesigned Frontier. The current Frontier has been out for 9,000 years, so can't wait to see the new Frontier. And Nissan says they have an announcement, I believe it's next month, early January. So definitely stay tuned as I'll go over what they do announce. I think it'll be the Pathfinder and the Frontier. But the most exciting thing for Nissan has got to be the Aria. It's coming out in the second half of 2021. Fully electric SUV. This is the next evolution, kind of like the Leaf for them. The Aria will have... A ton of power in the top trim. All-wheel drive will get you 389 horsepower and a juicy, meaty 443 pound-feet of torque. The thing, this thing is going to be quick. It's going to be fast. Uh, up to 300 miles in the front-wheel drive long-range edition, and it should have the the highest form of safety out of any Nissan or Infiniti model. Even though I'm excited for the Aria, I'm probably even more excited for the Z. Will it come out in 2021? I'm very skeptical that it will, but let's say it does. Let's let's entertain that. Twin turbo V6, taking out the Finity Q50, Q60, we should see the twin turbo V6 with up to 400 horsepower. Now, 
I'm also theorizing that they could put in a turbo four cylinder for the base model. We have, we have, we're gonna have to wait on that one. However, since it's just kind of a natural evolution of the current platform that the 370Z is on, you wouldn't think it would take that long. But who knows, I'm not Nissan. What about Nissan's luxury diversion? <laughs> what about Nissan's luxury division and infinity? QX55 was just announced. It's very good looking, coupe-like crossover. Unfortunately, it still will have the CVT transmission. As good as it looks and as good as that VC turbo four-cylinder is, when you pair it to a crippled transmission, it can only be so good. So yeah, at least it looks good and it'll have good passing power on the interstate. QX60, this needs to just be a home run for them. If it looks anything like the QX60 monograph, such a funny name, I don't know why they just didn't call it a concept, but the QX60 should be a home run for them. It needs to be. If Infinity is to survive, they need the QX60 to just kick serious butt. The problem is the MDX is going to come to market before it, and that's probably their main competitor as long as well as the R, the Lexus RX. Who knows if we'll see electrified versions of it or e-power versions of it. I'm really, really interested to see what they're going to do. I would love for them to put a twin turbo V6 in there. My gosh, put the twin turbo V6 in there to combat against the single turbo Acura Type S and we have an old fashioned Japanese shootout. Can't wait to see what happens there. Mazda. I don't think Mazda has anything planned for 2021. They're waiting for the new platform to come out in 2022. The front engine rear wheel drive platform with an inline six, whether that's a diesel inline six or a Sky Active X, or hopefully we get turbocharged versions of an inline six. A lot we still don't know about it. And I think we're gonna be waiting for a long time. 2021 is kind of a skip year for Mazda in terms of new product. I hope I'm wrong and I hope we get updated throughout 2021. Mitsubishi is not a skip year. A lot is right. Actually, everything is writing on the new Outlander. If you haven't watched my video on that, make sure to watch it. Should be getting a redesign early 2021. It looks good based off the spy shots we have. They will be doing an unveil soon. I'll probably stream it, have a good time with you guys. Uh, the Outlander will also be getting a plug-in hybrid that they are sourcing from the European spec model. So the Outlander PHEV will be getting upgraded, larger battery, more capacity, more power, which is good, even though it doesn't sell that well here. We're getting a refreshed Eclipse Cross. We will not be getting the updated Eclipse Cross plug-in hybrid, which would be cool. Kind of be as a, a, a very inexpensive a RAV4 Prime, but we won't be getting that. Now there's also talks as of this morning, put on your seatbelts because this is pretty crazy. There's also talks coming out of Japan for an e-evolution. I'm gonna hop on over so you guys can see this with me. This is what they're expecting it to look like based off of concepts we saw a few years back, I believe it was 2017. And they're expecting an Evolution Lancer SUV to come and I don't know what to think about it. It's, it's, it's kind of heresy, but if it's fast as hell because it's full electric, maybe it's okay. I'll see you guys on the comments. What do you think about that? Would you be interested in an e-evolution SUV if it's got the chops, the speed, no turbos, no engine noise, no manual transmission, no really cool wings, no cool hood scoops. It's not gonna be as cool, but might go on sale in the fall 2021. I'll see you guys down below on that one. That's kind of breaking news there. If you need to take a bathroom break at this point, go ahead. We're gonna go into Toyota and Lexus and you guys know I'm a little long-winded about both of them. All right. Toyota. Land Cruiser is dead in the United States. We just confirmed that. We got that on like Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, somewhere around there. It's just a kick to the pants. We knew it for a long time, but once Car and Driver says it's done, it's done. For all my people around the world who, who are not in the United States and you get the Land Cruiser, whether you're Australia, Middle East, parts of Africa, guys, you're getting the new Land Cruiser 300 uh, twin turbo V6 possibly twin turbo v6 hybrid as well now car and driver saying that toyota said that there will be a replacement for the land cruiser which will be even more luxurious than the current one and that's just completely idiotic they need to strip it out make it more base make it more jeep uh, wrangler like more bronco like even though the bronco is pretty badass in terms of all the features it has but they need to make it more affordable and the land cruiser is just not that at least here in the united states it's very very expensive and you might as well buy a Lexus LX if you're going to go that far in price. Toyota Tundra. Thank God it's been what since 2007 model year since we've had a new Tundra and we need one. 
It'll be on the new TNGF platform shared with the Land Cruiser. It's going to be awesome. Same powertrain, twin turbo V6 uh, as a Land Cruiser. Potentially hybrid, potentially plug-in hybrid. If you want to look real quick at TNGF spreadsheet, this is I'm this is what I'm expecting for a turbo V6 hybrid right here. 430 some horsepower, over 500 pound feet of torque quite easily. Now they could also make a plug-in hybrid with a lot more power, but that's just me getting really, really excited there. Probably not that realistic in the, in the next three years or so. Base engine will be 400 horsepower, somewhere about there, over 470 pound feet of torque. And of course the 8.6 will be coming for Toyota, probably in the second half alongside the Subaru BRZ. We don't know what it looks like, but we know it's going to be the exact same car, so I'm not that excited about it since we already know what the A6 is, or the BRZ is all about at this point in time anyways. And Lexus, guys, you know Lexus is very near and dear to me as I trigger my Alexa here, but Lexus, we know for sure we're getting a redesign nx the nx could be in the future their best-selling model maybe make it a little bit bigger maybe make the rx a three row i don't know what they're going to do but the nx needs to be an absolute home run i'm hearing they're going to call it the nx 350 or 350h replacing the two liter turbo with a 2.4 liter turbo going from about 235 horsepower to about 300 horsepower so excited to see what they do with the nx now they're also going to have a new interface they might be getting rid of the touchpad i know guys it's like lexus getting rid of the touchpad that means they'll be perfect there's nothing to gripe on about <laughs> and that could be true but i'm hearing a really large touchscreen 14 17 inches somewhere in there for the upcoming nx the hybrid the 350 hybrid it's hard to say it could be very similar to the RAV4 hybrid that we get with oh, about 220 horsepower or so, but it could also be, fingers crossed, that it's the more powerful electrified version of that two and a half liter four cylinder that we see that we see in the Sienna and the Highlander hybrids. So that would get us over 250 horsepower. So fingers crossed we get that higher output for the Lexus line because Lexus needs a pull away from Toyota. What incentive would there be to buy a nx hybrid over a rav4 hybrid if they have the same power and at this point in time the rav4 hybrid has a lot more power than the nx hybrid because the nx hybrid is really really old so we need a new one with a lot of power god willing and then 450h plus nx this will be the first plug-in hybrid from lexus it could just be a straight pour over from the rav4 prime which would be okay none of us would be that excited about it because it's something we've seen already and it's something that Lexus needs to do. They should be the flagship for the brands in terms of technology, powertrain, ahead of Toyota, but they're, they're not right now. The conservative side of Lexus would just be like, oh yeah, we're just gonna use uh, the, the Toyota RAV4 Prime's power train with 302 horsepower, get 40 miles of range on electric only mode, or they use the direct four setup that they just teased with an ES. So if it can fit in an ES, it can definitely fit in a new NX. And maybe they showed it in the es because we already have the es or the tnga uh tnga k platform es well guess what the nx also rides on that same platform so if they can put 200 now let's just go let's just go to the spreadsheet kirk if they can put that 291 ish horsepower plug-in hybrid super effective all-wheel drive system with a lot of power and torque from that rear motor with 436 pound feet of torque my gosh guys we could see 40 miles of plug-in range on an NX 450H plus, and God willing, they give us the, the about 300 horsepower with 400 pound-feet of torque. Now, you might be saying, Kirk, well, the RAV4 Prime has more, more peak horsepower. Well, keep in mind, these numbers are based off of a prototype that Lexus showed us. These numbers could definitely go up, and the torque is not even close to the RAV4 Prime. The RAV4 Prime would get, if we, if we look to the right here, it has a total of 335 pound-feet of torque compared to 100 more, 436 more. I can't wait to see what Lexus has for the NX as my voice is starting to go, um, but we're not done with Lexus. I fully expect them to come out with an IS500, maybe in the fall, hopefully a little bit earlier to combat the TLX Type S. I think they would be, oh gosh, if the QX60 and the Acura MDX both get turbo V6s and fight each other, how sweet it would be if Lexus puts the big fat five liter V8 to fight the TLX Type S for 2021. That would make 2021 so 
much more epic. If it does come out, I'm feeling like it is going to come out maybe the fall of 2021 alongside the new redesigned NX. What about the LX600? That's going to be based on the TNGF platform alongside the Tundra, the Sequoia, the Land Cruiser, etc. I don't know if it'll make it in, in 2021. There's a possibility, maybe like December, something like that. Stay tuned. And what about the Lexus EV? This will be the last vehicle I talk about before I wrap it up with you guys. Lexus EV, they teased it. We should hear more about it in the coming month. However, I don't expect it to come to the United States in 2021. We might have to wait till 2022. And guys, I'll leave it there. Which vehicles and brands are you most excited about? I'm so excited for all of them, every single one of them. It just makes my heart so warm during this holiday season. I hope you guys had a great Christmas, and I hope you guys have a wonderful 2021, as I know I will be as I cover, review, and just have fun talking about and showing you guys these awesome cars coming in the next year and beyond. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. If you made it this far in the video, haven't smashed the like button, go ahead and do that. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.